Yes, there you go. All right. Now, the next piece we have is going to be the system monitor. Now, many of you might seem really familiar to a uh, the Windows Task Manager, which it's definitely really close. It can do a lot more, though. I, at least in my opinion, and actually not an opinion, it's a fact it can do a lot more. Uh, right now, we can see a lot of processes. What's going on? This is system wide. We can do view all processes. Uh, we can actually kill the process very easily. You will right click on whatever you want, kill it, and I'll show you actually in real time. Kill it, and it will ask, Do you want to kill the process? Kill it, and it instantly dies. Now, in Windows, you would have to probably wait a little bit and wait and wait, and it won't kill it. You have to do it over and over again to end the task, but it never does it. The kill task works instantly, no matter what the program is, no matter where it is. It just kills it instantly. That's why it's called kill, I guess. Uh, but that's how you would manage your processes if something's taking up a lot of your uh, memory or CPU percentage. Like my record my desktop. Next we have resources. This is my uh, computer uh, processors. How they're working. They're pretty high up there. It's because I'm recording this video. And then we have the memory, how much memory it's taking. Now notice I only have 276 megabytes of uh, RAM. This is very, very, very special because it's actually really good because for all the things that you can do with Ubuntu and you look at Windows and it takes like five, six times more and it can't do as many things, which makes you wonder what kind of a program is Windows. It's like really badly programmed. But that's it. Anyway. Next we have how much space is being taken up on your computer. Uh, I have two pieces. I have the slash directory and the slash home. These are all my system files, <coughs> which I have 4.2 used out of my 9.8. You don't need that much space for your Ubuntu. I just made some extra just in case. And then we have the slash home, which is for uh, I have 138 used out of my 178.4. And that's basically how you look around. And then the system tab, we just have basic information. What uh, what Ubuntu release I have, what Linux kernel I have, what GNOME I'm using, and so on and so forth, memory processors, and so on. That's it for that. Next, we have system testing. This is a very very good application, uh, very useful for Ubuntu. It's basically to test your computer to see what works and what doesn't work, so that um, what doesn't work can be improved. You will do just a few tests. It'll ask you, um, can you hear the sound? Um, and you, it'll play some sort of sound, and when you hear it, you can press yes or no, and so on. Just pretty much answer the questions after they do a certain thing. That's basically how that works. I would definitely recommend uh, you doing this first, like once you install your computer, or after your updates and such. But definitely do this to help the community out, because that's what Ubuntu is trying to do, is to make a computer that's work, or a system that works with every single computer straight from the box. Next we have your typical time and date settings. We have the ability to change our. Oh, I have to unlock it first. We have the ability to change our time zone by clicking on the appropriate places. I don't know who lives in the middle of the ocean. Uh, next, and then we have configurations. Keep synchronized with internet servers, or you can just uh, kind of keep your own time here, which is does update from a internet server and then just kind of keeps you with it. And that's basically how that works. It's very simple, nothing too complicated. Afterwards, we have the USB startup disk creator, uh, basically the same ISO image that you downloaded from Ubuntu.com to install this Ubuntu. That ISO, you can see here, the, do the source disk image, you would basically other and just add it from this list here, from this window. When you add it, when you add it, then you put in the USB, it will be detected with this and then you format the USB uh, basically install a live CD on USB so you can boot from the USB and I will say USBs are a lot faster than the CDs and are a lot uh, you can actually store files on your USB as compared to CDs which are permanent and just click make startup disk and that's how that works and last but not least or last but least is the users and groups simple idea manage all your users and groups on your computer you have to unlock it to do advanced stuff um, th this user right now by properties I can check information like my real name I can change the password I can do contact information user privileges what can I can't I do this is a brief information here and then we have a advanced settings for shell 
the main group I'm in, the home directory, and so on. And afterwards we have manage groups, which these groups are basically a preset um, set of applications that can be used by this, by you or so. Like being an admin, using the mail and the news, the man program, uh, we also have a virtual box, users, uh, user here, Chris, Chris here, Pulse Audio, stuff, stuff like that. Just a few things that you can add to users depending on what you're doing. This is advanced. You more than likely won't have to be playing in here unless you're installing an application outside of Ubuntu. And that's basically how that works. Uh, thank you for watching my video. I'll probably be splitting this into a few pieces because of the time we have. I only have 10 minutes to actually present this on YouTube. But thank you for watching, and I'll be making a lot more videos soon. Bye.